for the biggest fish, the hottest bites. This week, here on In Depth Outdoors. Got it. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? Got him. Whoa, this is an absolute monster. <laughs> Headed to the best ice fisheries from across the ice belt. We'll fish longer, punch more holes, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites on ice. Oh, that's... <laughs> what a specimen. Oh, look at the size of that. Look at that fish. <laughs> that is a monster bike. is In-Depth Outdoors. Morning everyone. Today's episode of In-Depth Outdoors is a pretty important episode for us here. It's our 13th episode of ice fishing footage for the year. And the reason that's significant is this is our last ice fishing episode for 2013. Next weekend, we'll transition into open water footage. But for those of you that really enjoy our ice fishing broadcast, don't worry. Uh, we're still going to be doing a lot of ice fishing. We're going to be producing a lot of ice fishing video, and you can find that on our YouTube channel. So if you want to get your ice fishing fix, make sure you check that out. Now, today's show is really uh, a completion of a couple goals that we had for ourselves when we started our ice fishing season. One, we wanted to broadcast these shows the same week that they were filmed. Two, we wanted to cover as many states and provinces as possible to really get a great feel for ice fishing across the ice belt. And three, we wanted to cover as many species as possible. Today is about fulfilling that final goal. Uh, one of the very few species that we've not touched on yet in 2013 is trout through the ice. So that's what today's show is going to cover. Today I'm fishing with John Marshall from Markham Technologies. He's a very good friend of mine and John and I have a tradition that we almost missed this season. For the last few years I've taken John out ice fishing on his birthday and uh, unfortunately I was traveling this year, wasn't able to get him out. So today is that makeup day where a couple of real good buddies get out on the ice. Hopefully I can catch him a great big birthday fish. So stick around, I think you're going to enjoy the show. This truly is a completely different style of fishing. I've got this thing set up in a completely different configuration than I normally would. You know, basically set up from a entire water column perspective. I'm a walleye angler perch, uh, you know, and crappie sometimes, and I'm so, you know, with the, with the sonar unit, I normally have it set up where I'm keying in on that specific area, whether it's the bottom for perch and walleyes or zoomed up into the, uh, area of the water column that the crappies are suspended in but this is completely different we're in 40 feet of water and these fish could literally come in at any depth zoom is is pretty much off my screen right now and i've got a full water column in a graph mode and a full water column in a vertical deal and i'm just looking for any signs of life to drop down to oh this one's going to be my better fish of the day james Oh yeah. Oh, that's a nice one, John. <laughs> <laughs> the poor screen on my sonar is just smoked. We may have to come up with a defrost mode next year. Month from now, we'll be chasing these in the Spring Creeks of Wisconsin, but they're just as beautiful in the winter. Yes, they are. Fish one. Frozen hand zero. Got him. <laughs> There's no question about that one. He was up there at 15 foot. I put that spoon on his nose and it was right now. Boom, just smoked it. I love catching these fish in the winter. Lake trout, this is my first time, you know, targeting rainbows specifically. When I was a kid, I grew up uh, fishing Foster Arns Pond in Rochester. And most of those were browns, few rainbows. God, they're just impossible to hold such strong muscular fish you know it's not like a walleye where they've got that big head that you can get your hands around you know one of the cool things about these trout in the winter is they're an underfish species everybody's so focused on walleyes and perch you know they're great species i love catching them you get into the mid-winter time period like we're sitting at right now walleyes get a little slow perch aren't quite ready yet to really turn on the feed bag that they usually do late winter and these deep cold water species like these trout just stay active all winter long. It's a perfect time of year to get after a great species. Back you go. I didn't hurt nothing on that one but his pride. He's just, 
Oh, there's one. You got one working there, Johnny? So high up in the top of the water column, I can barely see it. Well, don't let him see you. You'll spook for sure. You got a face for radio. <laughs> I like you, James. You're fun to fish with. And that, folks, is how you talk to a sponsor. <laughs> we do tend to have a good time. There's one right down here on the bottom. There's two of them down there. Hopefully we get that competitive spirit going. There we go. Attaboy, John. This one's a little, feels a little bit lighter than the last couple we caught. Oh, I take that back. That's a decent fish again. That's, uh, you know, that's what I was talking about. We were up there around 10 feet of hitting between 10 and 12 feet off the water. This one closer down to the bottom. And as, as long as you can get down to it quick enough, uh, they'll react. It's fun when you can see it happen live. <laughs> You know, I was just telling them what these fish, they could literally be coming in anywhere. And as I said it, one came up off the bottom, dropped down to it and, and uh, smoke. That strike is just electric, just. At Otter Outdoors, we're committed to building a tougher, stronger, smarter line of ice shelters. Tougher is our roto molded sleds, known for their legendary strength and durability. Stronger is our anodized square tube frame, oversized and substantially stronger than round tubing. Smarter is our fully sewn and quilted insulated Pro Series and Wild Series thermal shells, and a complete line of smarter accessories. This winter, let Otter Outdoors unleash the tougher, stronger, smarter ice angler in you. Since 1946, Strike Master has held to a simple idea. If you build an auger that makes less work out of drilling holes, people will have more fun ice fishing. Strike Master's two-stroke solo series provides unmatched cutting speed in a lightweight design. New this winter, Strike Master unveils their Honda-powered four-stroke auger. The Honda 35cc light tears up the ice with reliable Honda power. Strike Master Ice Augers. Visit us online today to find the Strike Master auger that's right for you. There he is. This is, a, this is a nice fish here. And he dropped down about eight foot below the ice and just stood there. Just eyeballed my spoon. Ooh, nice fish. That's a darker fish. Beautiful fish. Man, look at that. That's probably about a two pound fish. And these fish will get four, five, maybe even six pounds in this little body of water. We hook into one of those, you're gonna hear a grown man make some funny squealing noises. Now these are two pound fish and they're just a blast. You start thinking about a four to six pound fish on these, the same equipment, that's gonna be a ton of fun. So that's the goal today. Maybe one about twice that big. If we can hit four pounds, I'm gonna be one happy guy. And that is just a beautiful rainbow trout. They're just so aggressive right now. I'm gonna let him go. We want these aggressive ones in this lake. I mean, what a fish. Beautiful. There we go. Off he goes. Here's what we're using. I'm just using a 1 8 ounce slender spoon. What I've done is I've upsized the hook just a little bit. You know, it's not that the hook that comes with a slender spoon won't handle these fish, but I do like a little bit bigger gap, uh, particularly on these trout species. They just kind of slash, you know, a walleye, he'll inhale that spoon and get it way back in his mouth. All three of these trout that I've caught, it's been just right on the outer lips. They just seem to grab and slash as they go by real fast. So just having a little bit bigger hook with a little bit more gap seems to make some sense. And that's uh, gold with that green tape. Pretty much anywhere I go anymore, if I'm gonna be fishing, fishing a spoon, it's gonna be gold with green, at least to start the day. I plan on catching a lot of fish today. I bought the, the jumbo size tub of waxies. Basically, I'm just threading on one waxy per hook. That last trout took two of the three that I had on there. Just gonna leave that final waxy hang and add some more. Certainly a little scent on this spoon doesn't hurt at all. More than anything though, I think it's just that extra movement, that fine pulsating wad of waxworm that seals the deal on these trout. Of course, the, the metallic sides of the bait that give off so much flash, that's what pulled the fish in. And I, I think when it gets right down to it, that big wad of waxworm is what seals the deal. Marshall, come get you some waxworms, buddy. The trick to fish, fishing waxworms for trout is to put them on as ugly as possible. I'm perfect at that. <laughs> you want just a mess of them on there. I got frozen hot dog fingers. There, help me do it. I still got some dexterity. I've had good gloves on for a bit. Yeah. One, two, Three, four. I've been double hooking each one of them so they just hang off like a just a mess. A waxworm chandelier. Oh, whoa, and on the drop! That one came from nowhere. Your fish Ooh. catching machine, John Marshall. And that one was right, right underneath the ice. 
Well, you gotta have a death grip to get these things <laughs> out the hole. I'm using the gold, golden green slender spoon that seems to really attract them more, more so on the fall when I see them. Fish on, Johnny, you're not the only one. This is serious business over here. Oh, oh a double. I got, I got the spool just going. I don't know what I just, <laughs> I got an angry one here. I've had two sessions of just absolute drag peelage. Woo -hoo -hoo. Man, dig it. Come on, buddy. I haven't seen where that spoon's hooked yet. Again, just James, right on the I'm going to be nearby for an assist. What's that, bud? I'm gonna come nearby for an assist, but more so to see what all the screaming's about. <laughs> yeah. That's the real deal there. You know, this is where the, the flashers come in so handy. Every inch of the water column's in play. Fishing these rainbows, we're in 49 foot of water. This one hit about five feet below the ice. I've had fish from 35 feet down to five feet below the ice. So, you know, if you don't have that flasher, you're really kind of fishing blind. And one of the things you'll notice is when one of these fish shows up, underneath your spoon. It's definitely a game of cat and mouse, but even more so than what guys will do with walleyes, you can really get aggressive with it and pull that spoon away. And these trout just turn on the afterburners, tilt their nose right up and just chase it down. That is way too cool. This one, definitely the hardest fighting trout that I've caught so far today. Two just awesome runs. One of the things that you'll notice about these trout, they're just, they're just like burst of speed demons. Your rod tip just bucks over and over and over as these fish are running. Just a beautiful fish. My kind of way to break things up midwinter. And back you go, sweetheart. Just beautiful fish. Everything about him. I just got my hands warm, John. I know. <laughs> my, uh, there's so much spray on my screen. Yeah. It looks like a motorcycle windshield that drove through a mayfly hatch. <laughs> as long as you can make out the colors, right? Yep. <laughs> This winter, start seeing red. Visit MarkhamTech.com and this winter, start seeing red. Mind if I fish with you guys? No, but if you're using Custom Jigs and Spins lures, you better get a bigger bucket. With Custom Jigs and Spins new tungsten heavy metal jigs, you'll get down to the big ones quickly and catch more and bigger fish. These jigs have been designed by world-renowned Croatian ice fisherman Czechai Matt. Czechai number one with Czechai lures fishing. Go Czechai, go! So when you use Custom Jigs and Spins, try the new tungsten heavy metal ice jigs. Custom Jigs and Spins, the hottest bait below the ice. We're in 40 feet of water, so I and I'm in the with you know using the 20 degree transducer, so I'm covering six you know six feet of water on each side of me here, you know six, all the way around 12 feet of water across the the bottom of the cone, and they can come in so fast and zip through and cover so much vertical vertical space so quickly. It's kind of like playing uh, Space Invaders upside down. I was never good at that game. <laughs> You know what I was good at though? Cubert. Yeah, you come across that way. <laughs> <laughs> you ever do this on like Christmas Lake or any other? Uh, you fished Grindstone before, haven't you? Yeah, you know, th there's a couple lakes in the Metro, Christmas and Square, are probably the two most famous ones. Uh, and I, I have fished it not with the same success or definitely not with the same size that we're seeing here today. Yeah, burning diesel ha has its advantages. Get a little away, get away from the people a little bit. Look at that one drop down now like a rocket. You got one working there, Johnny? Yeah. You able to see him through the uh, the frozen ice? There's little chunks, chunks <laughs> of goodness that I can see through yet. Oh, oh what happened there? I got rocked. John, that was grade A, grade A ugly, and that is just beautiful. <laughs> Way to recover, uh, buddy. This, uh, this guy gets the comeback player of the year award for, from me, and it feels like one of the better fish of the day for me. Oh no! <laughs> oh. 
Look at that. Oh, wait. So you're telling me there's a chance. How do you like that? That's more than a comeback player. That's the most improved too. James, I couldn't have done more things wrong with that fish and it still <laughs> gave me a, uh, a ride of my life. I noticed you didn't hold him up and kind of show him off to the world. It was almost like you felt you didn't earn that one. It's, it's not too often you get to catch a fish when your, your rod's 10 feet the other way. <laughs> <laughs> What I'll give you that, John Marshall. I'll give you that. What the heck was that? <laughs> uh, these rainbows are the perfect John Marshall fish. You can do everything wrong twice. And even when the fish pops off, the fish will swim up the hole so you can grab them and show them to the cameras. <laughs> Attaboy, John Marshall. <laughs> Anybody can do it the easy way. Here's another one. That's how you do it, buddy. Nice. You know, there's a couple of different lakes in this area that we'd hope to hit today. Oh, no. are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, I'm not going to throw my rod like John. I would have landed that one. Yeah, I know you would have. However, it got off way too uh, soon, too deep. It wasn't going to swim up the hole for me, I guarantee you. <laughs> Darn. Never give up, James. I was about ready to say something about going over to that other lake, but now I've got a vendetta. I'm not leaving on a lost fish. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I wasn't gonna let you close the gap there, John. Woo! As soon as I got that spoon above that fish, he was on it. Oh, he's sideways. This one rolled up in the line, so I'm just waiting for him to unroll. There we go, beautiful fish. Some of these are real dark or uh, real silvery. And this one, that's a beautiful sound, John. This one here is just real dark, pretty copper colored fish. That one was, was literally right under the ice. You know, everybody here in Minnesota gets so wrapped up on walleyes and perch, and I love fishing those species. But really, variety is the spice of life. There's a reason that there's so many different shapes, styles, kinds of fish out there. There's just always something new to do. Midwinter here, when those walleyes get less than aggressive in most bodies of water, this is just such a perfect species to target at this time of year. Coming over to see if I had you beat. So you come over to one-up me, and it turns out I got you by a few inches. <laughs> you know, if, if people think we're clumsy here with these fish, it's because they're just one big muscle is what it comes down to. But the harder you try to hold them, the more they just go but more so we can't feel our hands. That, that, that doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful double, bud. Yeah. Let's put them side by side there. Let's see what you're all about. You know it'd be fun? Come back in here in the summer and catch them a fly rod. Yeah, absolutely. You get them on that green and gold? Yep, green and gold. Oh. <laughs> so the plan today was to, you know, spend some time out here in the morning on this first lake where the numbers of trout are much higher. There is another lake nearby that has fewer fish, but they're much better average size. So that's the plan. We're gonna spend our afternoon looking for that big fish to close out the show. John, I think we're gonna pay the price for bringing all this stuff out on the ice. <laughs> Why do we bring so much stuff? <laughs> Ready, set, go. <sighs> There's always gonna be a little work to go with the fun, John. I got a prediction for everybody at home. The next lake, if there's a hill like that, it's gonna be an otter rod case in one hand and an LX9 in the other. And that's it. Yeah. Hello, I'm Dave Markworth. I'd like to introduce you to the Skeeter Boat Center in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. At the Skeeter Boat Center, we carry the Midwest's largest selection of Skeeter fishing boats, all at prices you can afford. And we offer test drives on most models in stock. Our highly trained staff will provide you the personalized service that you deserve. So check us out at SkeeterBoatCenter.com, where our goal is to help you have fun fishing. 
Well, spot number two looks a lot like spot number one, and that's really what uh, a lot of these little trout fisheries look like. They're old mine pits, or, you know, these are all natural lakes. They're just real small, deep, clear water, easy access. I mean, all these little lakes have this nice little plowed trail right down to the water line. We have learned our lesson, though, about yeah. hauling otters by hand up and down the, the hillside in that snow. This lake, very similar to the last one. However, we're told uh, bigger fish in this one, so uh, we know we're not gonna catch as many fish, but the chance to end the day with a great big rainbow trout is pretty high here, so we'll probably spend the rest of the day on this body of water, fish it till sundown. I should try sliding down a hill on my otter box. What's the worst that could happen, right? <laughs> I like you, James, you're fun to fish with. <laughs> Oh, there, oh, yes! You were due, buddy. Oh. Oh, elbow deep. <laughs> you just gotta fling him. Elbow deep and worth it, James. That's a good one. That one, uh, that one was a bullet. And basically just a blur on the sonar. Another green and gold slender, slender spoon fish. And just thicker. Whoa! Got him. <laughs> you see that one, Marshall? You look like you're stealing moves out of my playbook. <laughs> Dead sticking, buddy. Dead sticking. <laughs> uh, there's uh, no counting this fish in my uh, fish total for the day. That, that was a gimme. Nice. <laughs> Man. I have had so much fun today catching these trout. Variety is the spice of life, and these new experiences like this just keep me fueled up as an ice fisherman. If I did the same thing every day, went out, fished the same body of water, chased the same species, I would probably lose a lot of that fire in my belly. But bouncing around the Midwest like I do and always looking for opportunities to chase new species of fish makes it so much easier to get up out of bed every morning, get out here on the ice and see what's new to learn. Let that fish go. That thing is just rotund. That will be the word of the day right there. Man, they are just beyond gorgeous fish. Back you go, buddy. Thank you so very much. Ah, my hands aren't even getting cold anymore. You just kind of get fueled with happiness. <laughs> James is happy. <laughs> it's my antifreeze right now. And uh, that is the trout approved method for putting wax worms on a treble hook. That's like a chandelier of dead worms. <laughs> uh, the fish like it. Well, I think John and I are gonna call it a day. And you know what, I can't think of a better way to close both the day and our ice fishing season. We've had a phenomenal winter so far, really running around the entire ice belt. We've been from Winnipeg all the way out to, to Michigan. So I would consider our ice fishing season a success. Now, next week, of course, we're gonna transition over to open water episodes. But that doesn't mean that if you've been enjoying watching our uh, ice fishing adventures out here on the ice, that doesn't mean that they're gonna to come to a stop. We're gonna be continuing to film and uh, prepare a lot of video that we're gonna share on our YouTube channel. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed, to In-Depth Outdoors TV on our YouTube channel, you need to do so because we've got about 50% of the ice season left. So you can count on a lot of video. It won't be broadcast here on Fox Sports North, but you will find it on YouTube. So make sure you check that out. And John, just an absolute blast. What a way to end a season. You know, normally John and I go out, we go fishing for his birthday. Last year it was Mille Lacs for walleyes. We didn't get out on your birthday, but I think this makes up for it, doesn't it? You, you, yes, you are, uh, you are pardoned. I'm back in good <laughs> graces. Awesome. So for everybody that's been following us around the upper Midwest here for the last 13 weeks, I want to thank you. Uh, we've enjoyed hearing from every last one of you, email, messages online on Facebook or indepthoutdoors.com. Uh, uh, we really appreciate all that feedback and of course the interaction. Uh, from John Marshall and I, Thanks for watching, we'll see you next week. But when you tune in, we're gonna be in a boat. Buddy. Good day. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.